Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Bible study. Have any of you noticed that we are in the midst of a pandemic? That's not like the Olympics. This is called a pandemic. And so I'm all geared up. But for this uh, period of time for Bible study, I could take some of this off. And uh, I'm Claude, by the way. And somebody commented last time from the last Bible study, they said, you weren't wearing your name tag. So I made sure I have it today. So I can take off the face shield, which we're wearing all the time. I'll just set that back up there someplace. And uh, I can take this off. Okay, so we all got, uh, many of us have custom face masks. And Elaine uh, made this for me. It's got uh, musical notations on it, so it's like custom and custom made for me. And then uh, I don't think I'm going to need my sun sunglasses in here. Oh wow, the world lot looks a lot brighter without my sunglasses. And then, uh, do you think I'm going to need my baseball cap? I don't think I'm going to need my baseball cap. Um, all my kids gave me caps from the schools that they went to, so this is uh, the University of Guelph. This is a griffin. If you ever run into a griffin, it will look about like that. So I can set that aside somewhere here as well. Not really advertising. Have uh, some cold water here today because it's warm in here. And uh, if it gets warmer, then I can have a drink. So, I guess that's it. We're ready to go. Welcome to Bible study. And many of you have attended Bible study for like some years, and you know how this is going to unfold. You know for sure that I have some good jokes up front. And this is for Rolf and uh, Isla, if she's watching, because she knows a good joke when she hears one. And I'll be, I'll be listening uh, to, to, to see if you're laughing at these jokes. And then I have a report from the backyard today and uh, got some photos uh, to show you of things in our backyard, our backyard, yeah. These pictures were taken just in the last two or three days. So they're fresh, sort of like vegetables. And then I have uh, I introduced a new feature last weekend was guess, guess what province or guess what city. And so I've got that again today. I have a poem, a poem from Shel Silverstein. Well, I have a prayer. I brought my guitar, so we'll sing a few gospel songs together. And uh, then I'm going to talk for a while. <clears throat> and what I'm talking about today is really quite an important text from the Sermon on the Mount, so-called. Uh, and it's the very first beatitude. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven kingdom of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. So that'll be the title uh, when, uh, when my producer puts this together, puts it on the uh, internet, it'll be blessed are the poor in spirit. And uh, so that's good. And then afterwards we'll recite the Lord's Prayer. I will offer a benediction and then we'll sing that song. Gail and I will do a duet. And I know she does this on, on uh, Willow. <clears throat> Uh, go now and pass it on. So that's the way things are going to unfold on this uh, beautiful summer's day. Oh, and you notice that we're in a different place. Uh, we're kind of shaking things up a little bit. So we are in the Center for Excellence, and we can look out the window and see lilies, and we see the crab apple tree, and maybe you can see some of that too. We've got the screen here on my, on my left. I think the pictures are going to be brought up onto there this time. So everything is ready to begin. Now, sometimes, as you know, I start out with a song. And uh, so this, I'm going to start out with something. This is not from Newfoundland this time. So uh, I think I did this last time. And it fits in nicely. Oh, this is in real time. Did you notice that? So uh, neither of us was paged, so it's not a big deal. Isn't it nice to be in the flow of things? For 
strong winds that blow away, seven seas that thunder by, all those things that don't change come one day. For our good times are gone, I'm bound for new heaven, Lord. I look for you in the ever back this way. Think I'm going to Alberta, where there's good there in the fall. Know some friends that I can go to work and fall. Still, I wish you'd change your mind if I asked you one more time. And then you can sing the chorus because you know the chorus. And it mentions Alberta. So that's kind of a clue to my quiz. Uh, the new feature, guess, guess the city. That's a sort of a clue. Okay, so I have a new stand for the guitar. If you see it falling over, will you yell? Okay. Old jokes are the best jokes. So this is, uh, of course, copy news um, from, let's see how old these jokes are. Let's keep turning it around. October the 15th, 2018. So they're not that old. So I don't know if they're going to be that great because uh, old jokes are the best jokes. And of course, I've lost them all together now. Here we are. Okay, on the lighter side. You know, we have that expression where we some, see somebody that's gained a little weight. We say, oh, she's on the heavier side. The heavy side. He's a little on the heavy side. So this is on the lighter side. Teacher, you haven't listened to a word I've said. Are you having trouble hearing? Student, no, I'm having trouble listening. Did you like that one, Rolf? Okay. If you cross a four-leaf clover with poison ivy, would you get a rash of good luck? Not that eh? Never ask a two-year-old child to hold a tomato. <laughs> a ripe tomato. Did you ever used to throw ripe tomatoes at each other when you're, you know, collecting tomatoes in the garden? I'm not suggesting anyone do that, should there be any children listening at some percent at any point along the way. <clears throat> okay, the amount of sleep required by the average person is about a half hour more. Oh, you're over there. Oh, yeah. I think I was looking at Mike. He's so distracted. Uh, so, Mike, I'm, I'm turning my back on you now. Important sign. Do not walk past the end of a pier. Or the pier. I guess that's a sign as you go out onto a pier. Do not walk past the end of the pier. Very, very good advice. Yeah. Okay. Now I have a poem for you from Shel Silverstein. Um, and it's from, I've been bringing another book of his, but this one is called Where the Sidewalk Ends. This is another one, another book. Um, and I marked it, of course, now I, where did I mark it? Okay, yeah, I like this. This poem is about peanut butter. Now, do you like peanut butter? I like peanut butter. Most people like peanut butter, of course, unless you're allergic. But uh, we like peanut butter. And this is about a king who loved peanut butter. Okay, this is about a king that loved peanut butter. I'll sing you a poem of a silly young king who played with the world at the end of a string. But he only loved one single thing, and that was just a peanut butter sandwich. His scepter and his royal gowns, his regal throne and golden crowns, were brown and sticky from the mounds and drippings of each peanut butter sandwich. His subjects were all silly fools, for he had passed a royal rule that all that they could learn in school was how to make a peanut butter sandwich. He would not eat his sovereign steak. He scorned his soup and kingly cake and told his courtly cook to bake an extra sticky peanut butter sandwich. And then one day he took a bite and started chewing with delight and found his mouth was stuck quite tight from that last bite of peanut butter sandwich. His brother pulled, his sister cried, the wizard pushed, his mother cried, my boy's committed suicide from eating his last peanut butter sandwich. 
The dentist came and the royal dock. The royal plumber banged and knocked, and still those jaws stayed tightly locked. Oh, darn that sticky peanut butter sandwich. The carpenter, he tried with pliers. The telephone man tried with wires. The firemen, they tried with fire, but they couldn't melt that peanut butter sandwich. With ropes and pulleys, drills and coil, with steam and lubricating oil, for 20 years of tears and toil, they fought that awful peanut butter sandwich. Then all his royal subjects came. They hooked his jaws with grappling chains and pulled both ways with might and main against that stubborn peanut butter sandwich. Each man and woman, girl and boy, put down their plows and pots and toys and pulled until crack, oh joy, they broke right through that peanut butter sandwich. A puff of dust, a screech, a squeak, the king's jaw opened with a creak. And then in a voice so faint and weak, the first words that they heard him speak were, how about a peanut butter sandwich? <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. <clears throat> Do you remember, maybe it wasn't when you were a kid, but uh, if you put peanut butter on white bread, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, and try to eat it. Do you remember that sensation of having peanut butter bread stuck to the roof of your mouth? I think that's what that poem is about. I have memories of that for sure. Okay, I like that, peanut butter sandwich. So, uh, some good jokes with Shel Silverstein. Oh yeah, I have that new item, don't I? That I told you about. Uh, I'm gonna do that right now. And so I got it, I can't show you the front of the book, right? Because I have a picture to show you, and this is the challenge for today. This is the challenge. And uh, maybe we could twist Travis's arm and you could get a peanut butter sandwich if you win. All right? So that the thing is, I'm going to bring this closer so you can see it. And it's the picture on the right. Okay. Can you all see that? Now, I know it's at night. But this is a distinctive building in a certain Canadian city. Now I gave you a clue. I gave you a clue uh, because I sang a verse of Four Strong Winds by Ian and Sylvia. You remember the song? So that took us out west. But this is not Alberta. This is in fact uh, the legislature building in Winnipeg. If you have ever been to Winnipeg, then you know that particular building because it's really, really distinctive. And sometimes on the national news, on, on, when we watch the news, there'll be a story from Winnipeg and they'll show uh, the provincial parliament building, which is what I just showed you. So that's Manitoba. And uh, this particular scene, and I can probably do it without, without uh, Travis's help this time, this particular scene is so typical of Manitoba and Western Canada fields of grain. Now I spent four years in Manitoba, in Brandon, so it's a favorite. Manitoba is a place that I love. Okay, so, have some good jokes. Report from that. Oh, report from the backyard. Boy, lots of things happening in the backyard. Now I took, a, I think I have like four pictures, and I wrote down the order of them, and then I left the list at home. So, this is the, this is the, uh, um, I know that the first picture I'm going to show you, I think, is some yellow beans. The other day, the other day, yes, indeed, those do look like yellow beans, don't they? Wow, this is great. I love this. I love this. Um, Elaine went out and picked, uh, we don't have a very big garden, but she went out and she picked up uh, a dish full of yellow beans. And that's really a good sign when your garden is producing yellow beans, isn't it? Because they're a real treat. I, a, I had a friend who used to grow yellow beans, and every summer, he, he, early about this time, he'd bring me over a bag of yellow beans. They're really, really good. I'd say pressure in the garden. And this next picture, I think, is a surprise. And if I show it to you, when Travis brings it up, um, I'm going to ask you what it is. Oh, that's not the one, but this is good. This is good. Because we have, oh, that was good too. We need to go back. <laughs> Uh, we need to go back one because, um, I don't know, 10 years or so ago, our son Jason wanted a black currant bush in the backyard. 
So Elaine planted the black currant bush, and it has done really well. And then uh, we got a red currant bush as well. They grow side by each, side by side. And so uh, a couple of days ago, Elaine picked the, like these are the red currants, aren't they? And those are the black currants. Black currants are called, did I say purple? Black currants. Uh, and if you've grown these, which you probably did, certainly at the farm, you might have had quite a, quite a few bushes of these, um, they make great uh, jelly. Um, black currant jelly, red currant jelly, they're quite different in their taste. They're really, really good, and they're part of summer. Now, um, let's leap ahead to the next picture because Elaine took some of the black currants and she made a, a loaf. Yes, and this is it. That just about makes your mouth water, doesn't it? It's a black, it's a cake with black currants, draped in black currants. It was really, really good. Now, I know some of you are great cooks. You're really, really good in the kitchen, and you probably did some things with black currants as well. Maybe you made a cake just like that, black currants. You got any black currant bushes, Travis? Or no? no. Red currant? No. Fair okay, so maybe down the road, just a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Travis will get them, and they'll show up on your. <laughs> Do you have any farmers who might bring in black currants sometimes or red currants? I guess they wouldn't come because you don't really eat them fresh. So they're not like blueberries. Like for a while, right? Uh, well, these are domesticated. You can buy them at the at the uh, where you buy plants and stuff, uh, which is where we got them. But do they grow wild as well? I'm not sure. Maybe they do, because gooseberries. They, they grow wild, don't they? They're mightily, mightily sour when you pick them. And elderberries, we have an elderberry tree. Of course, they grow wild, and they're wonderful. I like elderberries. So do the birds, by the way. And then I think maybe, do we have one more uh, picture from the backyard with the first? I think I have like four, um, and I'm not sure. I'm not, the beans, oh, yes. This is, uh, you know what these are, folks? Oh, these are canna lilies. Canna lilies, and we have a number of uh, plants of canna lilies. They're really, really striking, aren't they? And a few years ago, when Bob Dixon was the maintenance guy at Pro Park Home, out here at the front, where the flag is, no flag, up here in the center, where when you come into Pro Park Home, you have this roundabout thing, and there, oh, there's a fire hydrant there. That was, it seems to be larger, but there were canna lilies planted there, and they grew to be about six feet tall. They were truly awesome. So these are canna lilies. And that's the report from the backyard for today. I'll have another report next day. So uh, it's a great time in the backyard. And next time I have, to have something quite exciting, more exciting even than these to show you. So that's the report from the backyard. I told you that the wrens have gone. Yeah, our birds have gone. And we have lots of, we have more, uh, uh, morning doves around, and I can't tell whether they're the ones that were hatched at our house, uh, where the godparents are. I'm, I'm a clock parent, as a matter of fact, to these doves. Uh, but we have quite a few birds around the backyard, and it's just a lovely, lovely time. So, um, where are we? I know some of you would count these things down. We had some, we had some great jokes, if I say so. We had uh, Shel Silverstein. We had the quiz of the day, Winnipeg Parliament Buildings. And then we had more of a report from the backyard, and that brings us to the prayer for day for today. Well, um, things are improving, aren't they? And you've noticed that because you've been able to visit with your families outside. The weather has just been mostly wonderful, not too many too, too, too hot days. And so things are, are a little bit better, and we're feeling a little bit better. Yeah. Good. So that's good, we can be grateful for that. Now, of course, we're using technology for me to come to you and be with you uh, in your Bible study on, on Spruce or Aspen, wherever. And uh, that's, there's, there's some technology that has really, really been important these days for you and your family. Skype and Zoom and such like these things didn't exist so many years ago. So we're very fortunate to have the technology that we do today. So we can give thanks for that. And of course, we'll give thanks for our families, uh, wherever they are today. Some of your families are, are, are on vacation or doing whatever. People generally are not going very far. A lot of people are having what they call staycations. 
So um, we'll bear that all in mind uh, in our prayer. And uh, first we'll ask God to look down in mercy upon us. Because uh, we're important to God too. Okay, shall we pray? Our Lord, we thank you for the beauty of the day. This is just a summer day. Um, and we were praying for days like this in the wintertime, and now they're here. So help us to enjoy the warmth around us and uh, the season, which brings forth fresh vegetables from the farms around us. And some of these we'll be eating from day to day. Thank you for the farmers around us who, who feed us and uh, grow such good crops of various kinds, whether it's uh, grain that ends up as bread or flour or uh, tomatoes or uh, cauliflower, our fruits. So we thank you for all those people who help us live well. Lord, as you know, we're in the midst of a, a, a very difficult time and um, all the world it's having a difficult time these days because of uh, this virus against which we have no immunity. Um, so we're, we're in extreme measures to keep ourselves well. And our families and all of our friends, all the people who live here and work here, we're all caught up in the same situation of trying to keep this virus away from us so we won't be ill. So we pray for all of those who are making the effort, making efforts to, to keep us safe, including the staff here. And uh, we pray for all those people who are trying to find a vaccine for us so that we can return to sort of the way life used to be. And this day we thank you for our families and friends. We thank you for people who are like family to us because some of us, may not have children, but we have people who are close to us. We're just as close to us as family. When we think about our kids and our grandkids, great-grandkids, and it's been such a difficult time for them, we pray you'll watch over these little ones and that you look out for their parents because it's been, it is a really difficult time for parents too. And so we want to leave these things in your hands. We have lots of worries and concerns, all kinds of worries and concerns of different kinds, depending on our position in life, who we are and such like. And we pray that you will help us to bear the concerns that we, that we have on any given day. We thank you for Jesus who came to this earth and who lived amongst us and who lived himself in a difficult place and a difficult time, and yet was able to open up a new world of possibilities for his hearers. Uh, and we would like to be those people too. Accept our prayer, we pray in his name. Amen. Okay. Now it's time. Sing a few gospel songs. And um, you know the routine. We start with Amazing Grace. But maybe we'll, maybe we won't do that today. Maybe we'll start. I was thinking about the song, I Come to the Garden Alone. So I think, I think we'll make that song our bookmark song today because as I came in, when you come in the front of Grove Park Home, you see the gardens off to the left here. And they're really, really quite something. There's a walkway through there. It's just kind of a, it's kind of a, I don't want to say a forgotten place here at Grove Park Home, but it's just this beautiful, beautiful little spot. You're under the, the crab apple tree and there's a bench there, as you recall. And then you can go down into this area here, which is just a kind of a special little, Area, so I think I think we'll make that our book. Um, book uh, and so I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear. The sun of thought discloses and talks with me, talks with me, tells me I am his own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none other has ever known. For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the sky, for the love which from our birth over and around 
someone singing along with this next song in one of the Bible study groups. I have eyes in the back of my head, right? Like a teacher. I used to stand up like teachers. Jesus wants me for the sun to shine for him each day in every way try to please at home, at school, at play a sun be a sun Jesus wants me for a sunbeam, a sunbeam, a sunbeam for you. Swallow what I shouldn't hear. Spirit, spirit of gentleness, flow in the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, spirit of restlessness, stir me from blessedness with with all the sea. You lift on the waters, call to the deep. Then you come toward the mountains from the valleys of sleep. I said, Spirit, Spirit of gentleness, flow through the wilderness, calling and free. Spirit, Spirit of restlessness, stir me from blasphemous wind, offering on the sea. This is in a live time, so it comes with all the all the things that happen, like announcements of the PA system, stuff like that. So um, now we come to my, well, shall we say, message for the day, right? Message. And my message for the day is about um, something that Jesus said. I'm going to make this the basis of my remarks. Uh, there's a a piece in the Gospel of Matthew that's called the Sermon on the Mount. And it gets that name because 
uh, at the beginning of chapter 5, Matthew tells us that Jesus went up on a mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he taught them, saying. Now, that's pretty interesting in itself, because he goes up on a mountain. <clears throat> now, if you remember the early part of the Bible, Moses goes up on a mountain and gets the law, the teaching, that instructs all of the, all of the early part of the Bible. So he goes up on a mountain. Now it was Mount Sinai. It's a real kind of mountain. A serious kind of mountain. And then uh, it says that Jesus sat down. That's interesting because in, in that world, at that time, the teacher sits down and the students stand. You get that? The teacher sits and the students stand and listen. So he's on a hill in Galilee. You wouldn't really call it a mountain by Rocky Mountain standards or even by Blue Mountain standards, right? Because people who know real mountains, like from Europe or from British Columbia, the Rockies, they come and they look at our Blue Mountains and they call them like hills, and yeah, which I guess they are. But Jesus sits down on this hill and he starts to teach. And he has some statements here, that he, each of which begins with blessed or happy, happy in the sight of God. Blessed, the first one is, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. I did mark it here in my Bible. And so, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, Matthew is hesitant to use the name God, whereas in, I think in Luke, a few of these are in Luke too, you'll, you'll read that and you'll find it says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Now, I jotted down a few remarks about this particular passage, uh, some things I wanted to say. Usually I just rely on my memory, as you know. So uh, yes, he goes up in the mountain. So Jesus is kind of like a second Moses. Moses goes up in the mountain, brings down the law, which is do not do this, do not do this, do not do this, all express this negatives. And Jesus sits down and teaches, and his, his law, shall we say, or his teaching, initially is blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are the meek, and so on. So it's quite different, but it's similar. There's a contrast. Now, um, I want to talk about this. There's poor in spirit, and theirs is the kingdom of God. Are you poor in spirit? <clears throat> Am I poor in spirit? Um, by someone who's poor in spirit, we mean someone who's tired, maybe. Not really. Poor in spirit so it refers to someone who is aware of his or her spiritual poverty. Someone who's aware of their spiritual need. So someone who's poor in spirit recognizes his or her need spiritually. Now it uses the word poor. And that's an important word too, because you and I, uh, we may have experienced personally what poverty is. And sometimes uh, residents who come to Grow up our home who are of your age, who are very, very elderly, um, they can remember some really, really difficult, tough times because they lived through the Depression when there were really, really hard times for many people, and the issue of having enough to eat was a real live issue. And where Jesus lived, in the time and place Jesus lived, there were a lot of poor people because there was no, there were no pensions, there was no social security system, there was no help in a time of you know, a virus, a disaster, earthquake, whatever it was, there was no system whereby, say, a government would help its citizens. That didn't exist. So they were poor. The poor, people really had to rely on their families. And people who didn't have families, if a woman was widowed or if children were orphaned, then uh, it became very, very difficult. Uh, if you didn't have a family, you were really, <clears throat> you were really, experiencing hard times when hard times came. Now, a few, a few verses later, Jesus says, blessed are the hungry, for they shall be filled. Now, uh, the poor in spirit, those who are poor are going to be fed. Now, I wanna back up for a, a second. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven, or the kingdom of God. Jesus sees that beyond the kingdoms of this world or the realms and governments of this world, there's a kind of another world. It's the world of God. It's the world of the spirit. And so that world 
uh, is the world that we enter when we become believers. We gain access to that world as it were. The kingdom of heaven is the place where God lives. Yeah, where God lives. And uh, it's hard to define, but in the Bible, one of the major metaphors used of God to speak of God is God is a king. And kings have a realm over which they have authority. So God is a king and God has a kingdom. And it's far reaching, it reaches everywhere because God is a spirit. Uh, the kingdom of God is in fact everywhere. But not everyone takes upon themselves the teaching of the kingdom of God. So here the poor in spirit are the kind of people that God wants. You know, if you have felt inadequate in some way, if you felt like, you know, other people were better than you in various kinds of ways, uh, if, you, if you didn't have the advantages that some other people have, and you, you feel you um, can't do this or you can't do that, uh, you, you don't have a lot of the same kind of, uh, what, uh, strength of ego that some other people have, then indeed, you're the kind of person God wants. Yeah. Uh, when we think we we're uh, we can't do something by ourselves, then that's really the kind of person that God is looking for. Now, I'm speaking to a group of people who've, who've been around quite a long time and lived the Christian faith, sometimes a long time, and you know these things already. And as we grow older, uh, aging is kind of a humbling experience because we recognize that, um, that we're not going to be here forever. Now, when we're 20 years old, we think, well, boy. But uh, as we grow older, we recognize the fragility of life and that we're not here forever and that we're not going to accomplish all that we intended to accomplish, perhaps. And so it's kind of, we're kind of humbled by it all. Can't climb trees anymore, can't ride bikes very fast, and things like that. Um, not water skiing very much anymore in our 90s. Um, <clears throat> so we recognize what it is to, to, to be poor, to, to, to lack. And uh, God says to us who feel that way, I can help you because uh, you can't come to me without a sense of need. Okay? So if we have a, a sense of, of need, and God says to us, you are just exactly the kind of people I'm looking for. Because I can use you, I can work through you, because you recognize that you're not going to do everything uh, by yourself, as if anyone was self-made. Okay? Now, I think I, I jotted down something here. Um, <clears throat> now, the hungry, the poor in spirit are going to be fed, you know, they're going to be taken care of. And how is that going to happen? I think that's going to happen through God's presence in our lives. Uh, we're going to be filled by the Word of God, by the Spirit of God, by the community of God, uh, and by prayer, and by meditation, and by being receptive. We just have to open the door, right? We just have to open the door, and God will enter and, and make us rich. Because there are different kinds of riches, aren't there? And sometimes we say of someone who has quite a few children, you're really rich. And indeed they are, in that, in that sense, they're wealthy and rich. But uh, we who are poor in spirit can be rich in spirit. And we just keep the door open and God will come and dwell with us. So that's the point I want to make with you today. And uh, if, if you continue through today and give that a thought or two, that, uh, you know, I have a sense of need, the response to that is that God says to you, uh, you're just a person that I want, okay, I'm just the person that I'm looking for, okay, that's kind of uplifting, I find. So I'd like you to join me in reciting the Lord's Prayer now, and then I'll offer a benediction, okay, okay that's what it's going to Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit, be with each and every one of us. Amen. Okay, and amen.
So we're drawing to a close. Um, and we like to sing this song at the end because it's a great sort of wrap up song. And Gail will be singing with me and maybe, uh, maybe Karen and Karen and Minka, Christina. Um, just take a look around and if you see them, the, they'll probably be singing with me. And we've sung this enough times that you, you may know it. So you can sing along if you know the words, you can hum along, tap your foot. You can, no whistling, but I'm not really big on whistling so much. May the Lord walk beside us as we leave this quiet place. For the Lord will always guide us if we walk in the light of His grace. May we feel God's love around us as He keeps us faithful and strong for the peace that God surrounds us and now we must pass it time together enjoyed being with you and seeing all of you and uh, see you next time thanks to our producer Travis for pulling all this stuff